Chris, time to do the dishes. What? Weak signal, can't hear you. <laughs> you need a booster. Boost, boost. <laughs> cellular booster? Is it the best option? Or can Mimo be all you need? Hi there, I'm Cherie. And I'm Chris. And we're host of the Mobile Internet Resource Center. And we focus a lot of time on cellular data options for RVers and cruisers to keep online in their travels. And one of the top questions we get all the time people say or ask us about is like, hey, I got this booster and it's not doing what I expected. Or should I get a booster? Or hey, I've got a booster and should I leave it on all the time? And it's going to make my signal better. <laughs> All right, so this is a cellular booster. This is the WeBoost Drive 4GX. This has been our top performing booster in, for years. Uh, there is a new model that has come out since that we are awaiting receiving and getting into testing. But this is just as an example. It's a very classic, really good all around. You know, the, this is a great booster. However, boosters really only give you the best data performance for download speeds maybe 20 to 30 percent of the time if that it's boosters aren't the be-all and end-all particularly if you if you have devices that have the ability to hook up antennas directly and so we're going to explain and talk, show the difference here so let's start with a concept called MIMO that's M-I-M-O <laughs> and it stands for multiple in multiple out and think of your ears. You are Mimo. You've got two auditory receivers and you can pick up two different signals and your brain processes that. That's probably the best simplest explanation right there. Think of antennas like your ears. Now all of our LTE 4G devices have at least two antennas or two ears inside of them. Smartphones, jetpacks, cellular embedded routers. Anything that can do an LTE signal has at least two antennas and they're inside the device. Right. And some of the newer devices actually have four ears, you know, maybe one on the forehead, one on the back of your back of your head, and they can do even more. They can pick up uh, the same signal, four slightly different versions of it, and that lets you go into double or quadruple speed mode. So MIMO is behind the scenes part of the magic that makes LTE so incredibly fast sometimes. So Sometimes your device itself, with its built-in MIMO antennas, is already doing a pretty darn fine job of getting a great signal and giving you the best data speeds. <laughs> now when you hook up a booster, now just a quick recap on how boosters work, there would be an external antenna like what we have mounted right above our heads on our radar arch, and then you would have an internal antenna that comes out that transmits wirelessly a broad, a amplified signal. So basically, what is happening when you're using a booster? You are plugging one ear and having a bigger ear on the other side. You know, big giant ear, plug. So when you are far away from a cellular tower, that probably could work very well because sometimes you focusing all of your energy on one ear at a trying to get as much signal in as possible into that one ear is the best option. But if you've got good signal all around already, or at least somewhat decent signal. You're cutting off the ability of your devices to use their two ears, their two antennas, to um, improve the signal and to even go into the double speed mode. So when you're in one of those decent signal areas already, just putting a little extra antenna reach on both of your ears is actually going to give you a better chance of hearing that signal and doing more with it. Just like what I'm doing right now, <laughs> looking like an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> and what, you, what how this actually comes out in play for a lot of people is they'll turn on their booster, they'll see, oh, the bars go up because the signal got louder. But if you do a speed test before and after, so many places, the booster will actually slow down your download speeds, sometimes cutting them in half because you got a big ball of earwax blocking one ear great explanation. <laughs> yes. And you know, you've got one signal louder, other one is just basically not being effective anymore. Now does that mean boosters don't have a place in your mobile internet setup? Not true. The places that boosters really can make a difference is number one, with smartphones. There are no antenna ports on smartphones anymore. Used to be back in the day, not way anymore. Back, so the day. only way to get a better signal to a smartphone or a device without antenna ports is a booster. But if you have a device, like uh, most hotspots, that particularly the ones we recommend, have ways to hook up two antennas to them. And most cellular embedded routers have a way to hook up two, and some even now have four antenna ports. So you can take two and four antenna MIMO and improve the signal going into those two ears, not without using a booster. And 
we find in our testing, and we test this stuff head to head all the time, about 70 to 80% of the time, hooking up an antenna to a device like this, a MIMO antenna direct to this, outperforms a booster that often. <laughs> so when we're really distanced from a cell phone tower though, where an antenna alone, without that extra electronic amplification, it needs it to reach really far away towers. That's when a booster really can help any cellular device. And, and that's the cool thing about having antenna ports is you could use either. Yes, yeah, so you could disconnect the antennas, turn on your booster and start improving your signal. So you've got the best of both worlds there. And in particular, where a booster is really, really helping is less with your ears, but it's more with your mouth. So it is megafying your signal back to the tower and a lot of places you will see your upload speeds hugely impacted by a booster. Sometimes actually your download speeds might cut in half and your upload speeds might go up by 10. And the reason for that <laughs> is the transmitter inside of our little mobile devices are a lot less strong than what is on a cellular tower that is screaming signal out everywhere to cover miles and miles. Teeny if tiny. you can put a megaphone or a microphone really is way the best way to look at it on your smartphone or your jetpack or a cellular embedded router you're giving it a louder voice so that the cell tower can hear you better right so so the upload speeds can be hugely hugely impacted and if upload is important to you and it's important for everyone but in particular if you're doing a lot of video like broadcast video two-way video conferencing things where you need a lot of upload data capacity a booster might make sense in middle signal conditions and then in particularly in remote signal conditions it might help the tower hear you when the tower can't hear you without a booster at all so that's when the booster becomes super indispensable is when you're way out on the fringe okay so let's quit talking about it let's show you some head-to-head -head results in this location which is a perfect testing location where we are all right so we are at anchor in coastal georgia we're inland a little bit and we are about eight five to eight miles from the nearest cell tower so this environment that we're in is applicable to both boating and RVing. So there are actual RV parks not too far from here. So the signal conditions that we're in are somewhat typical. Now I have here the Verizon 8800 Jetpack device. Inside of it, it actually has four antennas. So when we're talking about MIMO, it has four of those antennas inside of it. Now it's got two antenna ports as well on it. And when you use those, you're using 2x2 two two MIMO instead of the 4x4 four four MIMO inside of it. So first we're going to take a baseline reading with this 8800 without any antennas attached. And at this location, we are getting, let's see if I can see the sun, we're getting, but it's oscillating between 2 and 3 bars of signal. And as we all know, bars are what? Meaningless. We need to actually take a speed test. So I'm going to sit here and verify that my iPhone is connected over Wi-Fi to the 8800, and it is, then I'm just going to bring up the speed test app and do a speed test. And I'm going to try to keep a consistent distance from the 8800 so that we get good results. That's pretty rocking there. As you can see, bars really aren't indicative of the speeds that you're going to get. And we're getting some pretty great speeds with the 8800 just on its own. So getting 36 down and seven up. That is respectable for anything. I can do 4K video streaming over that. I can do a live video cast over that. That is great. I really don't need signal enhancing here, but let's show you what the differences can be. So I'm going to plug in, this is the Netgear MIMO antenna. There are actually two antennas inside this black housing and two antenna connector cables. These are TS9 antenna ports designed directly to plug into Jetpack devices. Make sure sure that they are nice and firm in there and not wiggly. So now the signal is coming into this and yep, see I point it towards where I know the cell towers are. My signals are now oscillating between three and four bars. Again, bars are meaningless. The proof will be what the speed test results are. And normally you would suction cup this to a window and not actually hold it up. This is a great little antenna. We get phenomenal results with it. You can get this on Amazon for usually under $30. And it gives usually great consistent performance and increase in signal. And you can see our download speeds are in the same realm that we were getting with the 8800 itself. So in this case, going from 2x2 two two MIMO with a directional antenna aimed versus the internal 4x4 four four MIMO isn't making too much of a difference, but those upload speeds are where you'll see 
a difference because the antenna has a higher gain than what the internal one does. Wasn't much difference this time. Hmm, not this time. Last time I got it was getting that 11 to 8. So in this case, 2x2 two two MIMO versus 4x4 four four MIMO, it's a wash up of which is better, but we didn't see any decrease in performance. Now this location wasn't necessarily great for showing you the benefits of a MIMO antenna. Here's some testing results we've gotten at other locations, and this is more typical of what we might see. Okay, so we're back inside our boat now where we have the Weboost 4GX drive set up. It is connected to an external antenna that is up on our radar arch. We are using their marine antenna in this application, but this could apply to any antenna that you might use with your Weboost. Our Weboost amplifier is right here, and we've got the interior antenna just set up right there. We have plenty of antenna separation there. So I'm going to set the net gear, or sorry, the uh, 8800 right in front of the antenna. All right, and I went from one bars up to three bars. Again, bars are what? Meaningless. Now we're still connected by Wi-Fi to the 8800, and I'm about the same distance as I was upstairs. And as we can see here, our download speeds are already coming in at less than half of what we were seeing without a booster. And the reason for this is, of course, we only have one antenna that is being shouted, basically, by that amplifier. So it's just shouting one single signal out there, and the device isn't able to use the benefits of MIMO. Now, what we will see here is the upload speeds should remain at least consistent, if not better, because of the extra transmit power. And there we got 17 up. So that's where a booster can make a huge difference is in those upload speeds when we're in these sorts of normal, moderate signal conditions. So there's a real world example for you. Okay, so now what we have done is we have connected to our pointing 402 marine antenna. It is a MIMO antenna, much higher gain than that Netgear, and it is omnidirectional. This was sent to us by the folks at liveandlight.net to test and put into evaluation, so we just got it installed. And so let's see what we do with an omnidirectional. Now I am vacillating here between one and three bars. Oh, I just went to four bars of signal. Uh, we have used SMA to TS9 adapters so that we can hook the hotspot directly up to this antenna. This antenna would be better really used directly with a router like a cradle point or a pep wave. So I'm going to do a speed test. Yeah, so the uh, the pointing did give us a little bit better upload speed than we saw with the Netgear Mimo or directly with the hotspot in this location. Um, so it does have a slight advantage of upload speeds are your focus, but of course the WeBoost gave us better upload performance. Okay, so boosters do have a benefit still. And they still do play a role in a mobile internet setup. But the downside is they are freaking expensive, especially compared to this little $30 antenna. Yes. It's hard to justify unless you really know you're going to need it. Right, so we, we recommend people, you know, definitely don't rule out a booster, but don't make that your very first investment when you're trying to look into ways to improve your signal, improve your connectivity. Um, add that on as it really demonstrates a need and a fit for your situation. Yeah, we recommend, especially if you have devices with antenna ports, try MIMO antennas first, even this little $30 guy, yeah. or get one on your roof. They're going to be more expensive when you were looking at uh, ones that are going to be permanently mounted. They're going to start getting into the $100 to $300 range or higher yes. for MIMO antennas. But a booster, especially one that can handle multiple devices at once, this one goes for $500. And there's new boosters coming out that are starting to be priced even higher than that. And then when you are ready for something like this, and, and again, it does have its place, you'll, you'll be better able to appreciate it. You'll know that you don't leave it on all the time. It's a part of your special special situations gear. You're having a bad problem, you're, you're weak signal, you can't get online otherwise, or you need better uploads. Oh, turn on the booster and then you'll do a happy dance. There you go. <laughs> all right, so there's a quick rundown of boosters versus MIMO. Now there is a heck of a lot more to understand about optimizing your cellular signal for the best data speeds. And we have a ton more content on this. You can find it at this guide that I've got linked to right down below. And a huge thanks to our mobile internet aficionados who make it possible for us to go out into the field and do extensive testing of all this gear and present unbiased reports like this back to you. Take care. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. 
They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.